Welcome to our short webinette on personalizing products and services. My name is David Burton and I'm a uh, solution architect with Rootstock and I just want to spend a few minutes and, and give you a flavor for really the value of how having everything on one platform, uh, how having everything using one consistent set of tools, um, how having all your business processes continuous helps you to provide that more uh, customized and tailored uh, service to your customer. What you'll see on, on the screen right now is a, a dashboard. And you know, this, this is a very high level, but this will start out at the top and it'll, it'll show us the number of leads, number of opportunities we have, the, the, number, the dollar value of each opportunity or the total of each opportunity group by stage. Uh, how much closed sales activity we have, what we've invoiced, and even our current inventory information. So already you can see at a very high level how we're able to pull together information from across the spectrum. But now let's go in and let's get into a little bit more detail and let's talk about how we do those things at an individual customer level. And we're going to start in here with an opportunity. And we're going to Look at this particular opportunity we have to uh, provide a power system to a hospital. So it might be something that uh, needs to be done in, in light of today's uh, current environment uh, with the pandemic. So what you see here, this is an opportunity. So if you're familiar, if you're familiar with Salesforce, this should look familiar uh, as an opportunity. And then over here on the side, this probably will look a little different for you if you're used to looking at an opportunity in Salesforce, because what you'll see over here is you'll see a quote. You'd probably see that today. And now as we come on down here, we start to th see sales orders. We start to see things like sales invoices. Uh, we have notes and attachments. If we configured a product using uh, either the Salesforce configuration tool or Rootstock's configuration tool, we would see that show up down here. But now as we start to look at this opportunity, we can see forward in the business process to see things, documents, and transactions that are associated with this particular opportunity. And you see up here at the top where I can create a rootstock uh, quote or a sales order straight out of this opportunity. So let's walk forward through that. So let's go and let's take this particular sales order. We're going to drill into this because we want to spend a minute and, and look at the different things on the sales order. So you'll see here, this is our sales order number 151206. So if you're looking at this from a, um, from a from the application perspective, we were sitting in CRM a minute ago, now we're into ERP. We're into the sales order uh, management or order entry, man or order management selection or section of the ERP solution. And what you'll see here is on this particular order, we've got four different items. Uh, we've got one item here, it's a unit that has to be built. And you say, well, how do you know that? If I look right here, it says configured. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. And this goes back to what Tom mentioned a few minutes ago between the different types of operations that you might have or different types of products you sell in your company. You might be uh, configured to order or make to order or, or even a, a, a um, engineer to order type company. That goes under a category of what we call a configured product. You might be someone that just makes something and sells it to stock. You might be, uh, you might be doing all those things. I would even contend to you that in a lot of cases, a product, as it goes through its life cycle, could at one point be a configured product. It could go to a stock product. It could go back to a make-to-order product as it reaches the end of its life cycle. But as you see here, though, we've got two different types of products. One has got, this has to be manufactured. And if you look over here on the right, you see that the system has already created me a work order that's linked to this particular sales order to go make this product. And if you look closely, you'll see up here at the top, our sales order is 151206. Our work order is 151206. And oh, by the way, look in the corner up here, St. Joseph's Hospital Emergency UPS is the opportunity it's connected to. So now what I've started to do is I've built I started out with power system constructors as a lead. I created an opportunity for a job they're working on. I then turned that into a sales order and now I got a work order. And now the system is I keep building 
as I keep building those transactions through that process, the system keeps them all connected together for me so that we can very quickly figure out where we are and all the things that are associated with meeting the requirements of this customer on this particular job they're working on. Two other things I want to note down here, or we have a product type here for installation, it's called a service. And then we have a service uh, contract down here, which is a one-year service contract. This is a category we call miscellaneous. Even though we would tell you that we are a product-based ERP solution, we can also handle services as well. These could be services associated with this individual product. I could just bill you for a service in general that's not associated with any particular product. Um, you know, installation is just someone going out, you notice the units of measure here are hours. This is someone going out to install that piece of equipment. I've got a service contract that could bill quarterly, it could bill monthly, it could bill yearly, annually, biannually, however you want to bill it for uh, maintenance or a maintenance contract on this particular piece of equipment. So you see a lot of different types of transactions that we can, can handle within the system to support the various needs and gives us more offerings that we can provide to our customer. Let's go down for a minute and let's drill into uh, that particular work order because I want to bring out a couple of things there. When you, when you sell something custom, which is what in our world a configured item means, this is something that is typically configured, uh, maybe let's say with a configuration tool that has a very specific bill of materials that's associated with it. Uh, it may have a very specific routing to build it that's associated with it as well, because if the bill of materials is unique, there's a good chance that the routing that's required and the operation steps to build it may be unique as well. One of the things that we can come out of that with is a very specific price. So based on that exact configuration, we can come out with a price and an associated cost that goes with that to provide that particular product. Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll drill down into um, this particular work order and take a look at that. And you'll see as we get down into it, the uh, first thing I'll show you here is, well, first thing I'll say is at, at this level right here, you see this is the link is now back to the sales order. So anywhere you see something in blue, I can go right back to that particular sales order line that this came from. If I come up here, I can come over here and I can say, show me the components. So that, that specific bill of materials that's associated with this particular unit that we need to bill is listed right here. This could be very specific to this unit and unlike any other unit we may be producing. I could, be, I could have produced multiple units, all different types of units on that sales order to this particular customer, and each one of those would have had its own work order to go produce it. So those are other options that we have. The operations that are associated with making that particular piece of equipment, those operations as well are specified here. So you can see we have to prep and paint some doors, we have to install some uh, components in the cabinet and wire them in, and then we have to test the, the assembled unit. So what, what we have now is a very specific set of operations to make the product, a very specific bill of materials. Then we, we can uh, compute a very accurate selling price. We know our cost uh, very accurately, and we can also schedule this order accurately as well because we know exactly what's required to go build that particular order. So that gives you an idea of how, as we go through that process of providing something to a customer, everything stays linked together and you can, you can uh, basically enter that, that transaction stream at any point and either go forward or backward based on what you need to find out uh, for that particular customer, that particular transaction. You've seen us go forward here. We started out with an opportunity. We went to sales order. We went to work order. You know, sometimes you need to go backwards through that process as well. So if I came up here and I said, I want to look at uh, a particular customer, let's take an example. Let's say that uh, you're someone working in accounts receivable, you come into work, uh, you're just perusing this dashboard, which has up-to-date information on the pulse of the organization from an accounts receivable, receivable perspective. And you come down here and you look at it and maybe you're rolling through this particular element. And you know, this one customer here, owes you a lot of money. 
one of the things you might want to do is you might say, I'm going to drill in and find out what's going on with this customer. Notice where I go here. This is what, this is what we call a customer 360. And this is what Tom had spoken about earlier. This is really where, where you saw us looking at things in the opportunity, all the sales orders and invoices associated with a particular opportunity. Now we've taken it up a level. We're doing two things. We've taken it up a level and we're looking at things holistically at a customer level. That's one thing. And the other thing we're doing now is we're going in reverse through the transaction chain. So I started with accounts receivable or in accounts receivable. I might come over here and say, what, what if we sell these folks that got their accounts receivable balance so high? I might look down here and I see this order for, uh, for uh, $250,000. Let's drill into that for a minute. Once I drill into that particular order, I can see what the product was. And it'll pop up here in just a second. It'll show me what the product was. This was like an automatic dosing cabinet, $250,000. This was sold in April. And oh, by the way, let's look right here and we can see this is the opportunity it came from. So now I'm going backwards through the transaction stream to get back to the headwaters uh, of this particular customer and one selling event that was responsible for a huge each chunk of their outstanding accounts receivable balance. And the other thing I want to show you too is while we're here, let's go back. So if we come back over here to, um, let's go to our customer 360. And I want to show you another thing too, because a lot of times customers will call you and they'll say, hey, um, I've got an order in with you. Uh, I need to know the status of that order. Maybe it's something that has to be built. It's that configured item that we looked at a minute ago. So a lot of times you, you look at that and you say, okay, I'm looking at our, our customer power system constructors. And this is basically the same page we looked at just a minute ago for the hospital where I can see, I could come up here and I can see all my sales orders for them. Same thing we looked at a minute ago for a different customer for Bellevue. I can come down here and I can see what they owe me, what, my, what their credit limit is, et cetera. One of the things I wanted to point out to you though, is I can also come here and I can see things that I have running in manufacturing for this particular customer. So if I scroll down here, I will, so in fact, there it is right there at the top. There is the order, the work order that we were looking at just a few minutes ago. So that customer, if that customer called me up, I would be able to look out here and see what the status of this particular order is. Uh, status five means this is ready for production this was due on May 14th. So I probably need to get on the phone and call somebody because this is five days overdue. But the idea is I can see as part of this 360 degree view, not only the obvious things of what I've sold you, what I've invoiced you for, but I can also see the things that I have running in production for you and when those things would be complete. So once again, because we've got all those transactions interconnected, linked together as they flow through the system, but cause everything sits on one platform, it's very easy to go forward and backwards through those transaction streams to be able to provide for a customer the information they need at any given point in time. Visit rootstock.com forward slash demo to request a personal demo. Thank you for your time today.